Kuzu Zambola, Bhutan e-learning project welcomes you to this physics lesson for key stage 5, classes 11 and 12. My name is Techin Wangchu. Uh, before I tell you anything about today's lesson, uh, let me begin by asking you some questions. Can you hear the sound of the vehicle flying through that road? Or can you see the board behind me? Or else can you see me? I know you would have said yes, but had you ever questioned how is this possible? The answer is, these are all possible due to the phenomenon called wave, which I am going to talk about wave nature of light in this lesson, which falls under the branch of physics called wave optics. To begin with wave optics, let me briefly talk about the wave nature of light. Until mid 17th century, Scientists and physicians treated light as a stream of particles called corpuscles, and they believed light is just made out of particles. However, from mid 17th century, scientists and physicians have developed an idea that light can be even a wave. However, the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens already proposed in mid 16th century that light is a wave. He said, the reflection and reflection of light can be explained on the basis of wave. However, scientists could not accept his theory immediately because scientists questioned if light is a wave, then it should be able to bend like sound waves. For example, if someone talks in other room, we can hear the sound of, we can hear this sound. However, if someone puts light on in the other room, it is difficult for us to see the light, showing that light cannot bend through the door or over the walls like sound wave. Based on that reason, scientists could not accept his theory immediately. However, for Huygens' rescue, another scientist called Grimaldi said light can actually bend. In the same century, that is in 16th century, Grimaldi proposed light can bend. However, he said this is not visible to our eye because the wavelength of light is very small comparing to sound waves. And this idea, now we accept it as diffraction of light. So, which means light can actually bend. Then from 17th century, you know, after them, scientists like Young, Maxwell and Hertz succeeded in explaining that as actually light is made out of both particles as well as waves. Now we call it dualistic nature of light. And in today's lesson, I will focus more on wave nature of light. And to understand more about the wave nature of light, one of the widely accepted principles is the Huygens principle. This principle can actually explain the propagation of wave in the medium. And also it can determine the position of wave front after any interval of time. So these are the significance of Huygens principle. But however, before I explain you the Huygens principle, one important thing that you need to know is what is wave and what is wave front. So I know you have some ideas about waves since you learned in lower classes. However, to click it in your mind, let us once again look at the definition of wave. So wave is the disturbances of a medium that propagates from one point to another point. Be it sound wave, be it light wave, be it any radio waves, X-rays, whatever it is, it is just the propagation of energy from one point to another point. While the vibration or the disturbances move from one point to another point, we need to keep in mind that particles actually does not move from one point to another point. So in a wave, these two things are very important. First says, particles of the medium remains in the same position, which means particle does not move. However, energy can transfer from one point to another point. Uh, please observe carefully in this simple demo, I have few instruments to show the nature of the wave. So here first we have a stand and we have spring here attached to the stand and I have some weights in my hand. So by using these many things, I want to show you how wave actually propagates. And especially this uh, setup can explain the propagation of sound wave. And we know sound wave is longitudinal wave where as they propagate, they form compression and rarefactions. So now, as I put my weight on this spring, you can observe that due to weight, 
the spring is being stretched downward. And as I release my hand, you can see I'm applying force somewhere at this end. As I release my hand, due to the tension developed in the sting, uh, spring, the spring will move up and down. And that time, please observe the formation of compression and rarefaction. So compression means when the coil of springs all come together, that is called compression. And when they separate from each other, it is called rarefaction. And this is exactly how sound propagates in the air. For example, when I talk to you right now, first particles nearby my mouth vibrates, then energy is transferred to next layer of particles, and subsequently it reaches to you. That is how the wave propagates. And in this example, you can see that this part of the spring does not go to this end. However, the motion from this end is transferred to the spring and it reaches to this end. That is what is meant by transfer of energy and particles remain at the same point. Uh, to make you understand more, please observe this clip. This is a transverse wave. And when you observe at this wave, you can look at two red points. I have one red point here and another red point here. This represents particles in the medium. At a glimpse, you will observe that this red dot is actually moving like a wave from one point to another point. But upon careful observation, you will see that this red dot or particle is just vibrating up and down and it does not change position from one point to another point. So in this case, what you have to understand is wave is vibration or disturbances of the medium in which energy can transfer, but you know, the particles vibrate in the same position. And now Let's look at how actually wave propagates. And to understand that, we need to know something called wave front. And now our next concept is, what is actually a wave front? So according to the definition of wave front, it says the point in the medium where all the particles vibrate in the same phase. So I will explain more about this in my next slide. And let us look at the properties. The particles on the wave front has equal distance from the source of the light which you'll understand when I do next slide presentation. And wave front is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave, which means, for instance, a light is moving in, the, wave is moving in this direction, wave front should be perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And the next property says, the phases of consecutive wave fronts are different, which means when wave propagates in the medium, we can take different position in a wave called wave front, and the particles vibrating in different wave front will have different phase. Now let us look at the types of wave fronts based on the source of light. If the light is coming from a point source, then wave front, the shape or nature of the wave front will be spherical wave front. A spherical means you can just imagine like a ball in which the light will travel in all the directions. So the shape of wave front will be a spherical shape. You can look at this. If you consider that red dot as the source of light, then the light coming from this red or point source will go in all the direction. However, I have shown you just in one direction. So this rays indicates the light waves. Now, if you take one point anywhere on this wave and draw one line which cuts all these three rays perpendicular then you will get the wave front for example you can see here as i draw arc or a line line a a dash then it will become sphere in shape spherical in shape however if you carefully observe you can see that at this point, this particle, this wave front is perpendicular to the ray coming in this direction. Let me show you another wave front. You can see as I draw this line, B, B dash, this represents another wave front. And this is also spherical in shape. So wave front coming from point source of light will be spherical in nature. The second type of wave front is called cylindrical wave front. And this wave front actually comes from line source of light. For instance, the light coming from this pointer you know, is laser light. So it travels in a straight line. And if we carefully observe, though not visible right now, there will be wave front formed around this line source of light. So this wave front will look something like this. And if we complete the diagram, you can see it is 
uh, cylindrical in shape, so we call it cylindrical wave front. And the third type of wave front is called plane wave front. Whenever light comes from distant source, for example, light coming to Earth from Sun, as it reaches on Earth, the nature of light coming from Sun is parallel to each other. So whenever light comes from distant source, the wave front will be plane in nature. For example, you can observe this as ray, and as I draw one line which cuts these three rays perpendicular, then we will get the wave front. Here, A A dash is one wave front. I can take an, another point here, and B B dash also represents plane wave front. Now, we know what is wave and what is wave front. Now, let us look at Huygens' principle. As we discussed earlier, Huygens' principle has two important significance. It explains the propagation of wave in the medium. At the same time, it can tell the position of the wave. Now, keeping that significance in mind, let us look at these statements of Huygens' principle. What does it actually mean? First statement says, every particle of the medium situated on the wave front acts as a new wave source from which fresh waves originate. For instance, let us assume a light is coming from unknown source, so we can consider that as primary wave front. And this primary wave front, as I draw a line on this primary wave front, then you know the line which cuts all these rays is called secondary wave front. Then this secondary wave front becomes new source of light for another uh, wave front. Then the second statement says. The secondary wave lets travel in all the directions with the speed of original wave. Now, as we take this line as secondary wave front, light waves will not stop here, it will continue propagating. However, for these three rays, which is emerging from secondary wave, is called wavelets, secondary wavelets. For these secondary wavelets, then this wave front is called the source. And it travels with the speed of the original wave in all the directions. And the third statement says, the envelope of secondary wavelets in the forward direction at any instant gives the new wave front at that instant. Which means right now I have chosen this point. Of course, you can choose any point you want. For example, if you wish, you can take another wave front here. But we need to know how to draw the wave front. That is, as we draw the envelope. You can check this one as we draw the envelope. Now, how to draw the envelope? This depends on speed of light and time taken by the light to cover that distance. So as we draw that envelope, now the line which I can draw on the tangent of this envelope will again give you a new wave front. So that is how wave keeps on propagating. And to make it clear for you, once again, we can check this example. Let's say we have primary wave front and lights are coming from primary wave front. Then this is called rays. You can see as I draw one line, which cuts all these three rays, this is called secondary wave front, and this is called secondary wavelets. We have here secondary wave front, the wave which originates from secondary wave front is called secondary uh, wavelets. So, <clears throat> as I draw arc or envelope, again as I said, how to take this distance, it depends on you. It is, it is not necessary you have to take the same distance. You can take shorter distance, longer distance as you wish. However, it should be same for all the rays. So as you draw the envelope and when you draw one tangent line which cuts all this envelope together, this will form another wave front. And similarly, from here when you draw another ten, uh, envelope, you will get another tangent here. This will be another new wave front and it keeps on propagating like this. Now let us look at this final example of how wave propagates in the form of wave fronts. You can consider this red dot in the center as the source of light. And from here, let us assume light is traveling in all the directions. And from here, I can take any radius and draw again one envelope. And you can see the particles which are on the same envelope will be in same phase which means light coming off from the source will reach at this point, this point, and this point at the same time. And this one will become the new source for another wave front. For example, if I draw another wave front and the particles on this wave front, then for this particles, this is the source and not this one. This becomes the source for this particle. And again, if I draw another envelope here, 
then these particles also will be this. So that is how a wave propagates from one point to another point. And with this, we are coming to the end of this session. And as you know that in this session, we talked about Huygens principle, the nature of wavefront, what is wavefront. And to end this session, I will leave you with these three questions. First one is, can Huygens principle explain the propagation of sound wave? And you need to reason out why. If yes, why? And if you say no, then you need to tell the reason why. Second one is, imagine you are reading your favorite novel book in a dark room dimly lit by a single candle. What would be the nature of wavefront of light coming from the candle? Which means you need to describe the nature of light coming from the candle by looking at the wave that comes from the candle. And third question is, why does the light from a torch reach up to only certain distance? For example, if I put on the torch, the light from torch will cover some distance, then you know it will fade away. However, according to Huygens' principle, it should keep on traveling because you know every wavefront is acting as new source of waves. However, after covering some distance, it will fade away. And why do you think it is fading away? So with this, I'm coming to the end. And thank you for investing your time with me. I will see you all in my next lesson. Karinji. <laughs>